G'day, I'm Glenn, VK2HTV, and today we're going to connect up one of these to an ICOM radio. And you might go, well, that's very good, but I don't have one of these helmets. But the key is in this very microphone, and that's more common than what you think. But if you're trying to connect up a dynamic microphone, it might not work. So let's dive into microphones and connecting that to an ICOM radio. This microphone on the end of this boom is an electric condenser microphone. And that's one of the key things. If you look on the back of the ICOM radio, it actually does say electric condenser microphone. So this helmet is actually just no different to a set of aviation style headsets. I've just adapted the ear earphones and the microphone straight out of a Bose A20 headset, aviation headset. Before we get into ham radio microphones, let's take a quick history lesson in aviation style radios, which has a similar hookup to ham radios. Aviation style radios transmit on the AM band. When aviation radios were first introduced, they used a crystal microphone. The crystal microphone element needed to be excited by a small amount of voltage, pretty much the same thing as an electric condenser microphone. Electric condenser microphones are widely used and can be seen in broadcast situations. For instance, this lapel mic is an electric condenser microphone and is powered by a AA battery down the bottom of the microphone. It's a balanced microphone, so the signal coming back to the broadcast equipment doesn't see that voltage. The voltage is only seen on the microphone element. Now the difference with ICOM compared to other ham radio manufacturers is the ICOM uses an electric condenser microphone and it does need voltage applied to the microphone to excite it. The difference is we don't want that voltage coming back down the line to the radio. If you're plugging a dynamic microphone into your ICOM radio you could do damage to the microphone especially if it's an expensive one. The key thing is if you're using a different style of microphone that doesn't need the voltage you can do damage to the microphone and also back to the radio itself. So what you can use is a blocking capacitor. This will stop voltages coming from the, the radio to the microphone. You can also use an isolation transformer. Something like a 600 to 600 ohm isolation transformer will isolate that voltage. If you are using a dynamic microphone with an ICOM radio and you've installed that blocking capacitor, you also might find that the actual volume is a little bit low. You can do this in some gain settings on your radio or you could run it through a mixer or a pre-amplifier for your dynamic microphone. You also might have to lift the ground and this can be done by using some equipment that musicians used to lift the ground on a balanced signal. There are headsets around such as the Heil Sound Heil headsets which are made for amateur radio. Now for the ICOM version of these they do take the power and they also do sound perfect for amateur radio, especially if you've got a pile-up. They can cut through on the small narrow bandwidth that you're using on HF. The problem is if you use those ham style microphones from Heil on a broadcast situation, it does sound very thin because they're, they're specifically made just for the ham radio market. So if you have an aviation style headset for another use, you might just have it in a cupboard. The aviation style headsets will work perfectly with the ICOM radio. So let's do some testing. Now this is using a Kiwi SDR receiver and I wanted to test with a spare microphone the electric condenser part before I actually plugged in my expensive aviation headsets and it actually sounds quite good. One, two, is this frequency in use? Now as a comparison, this is the standard fist mic, the HM219 that comes with the ICOM 7300. CK2 HTV testing. 
And from those tests, you can probably hear that there's a little bit more bass on the electric condenser boom mic compared to the actual fist mic. You might have to check what type of element you have on your actual headset. It could be different because there are versions for military and for commercial aviation, which have different impedance. And sometimes they also have different elements. So just check that you do have that electric condenser microphone. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching 73s. Thank you.